Hello, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's Tivization episode from Kiskinta, a global conscious parenting and educator collective. Uh, this is Devi Chobha, your host for this evening. Bring your cup of chai and join us for conversations on topics that are not going out of fashion anytime soon. Structured word inquiry is an emerging methodology that uses scientific inquiry to analyze words, their meanings, their structure, and their phonology. This method has been particularly found to be useful for all dyslexic learners and learners of all age groups often see a quantum leap in reading skills with this method. This is a fairly new method. And this week on Chivizations, we have Shauna Pope Jefferson speaking to us on the use of structured word inquiry in reading development. Shauna has practiced as a speech language pathologist in a variety of medical and educational settings over her 20 year career. She served as a senior lecturer and clinical supervisor at the Southern Illinois University in communication disorders and sciences for nine years before opening her own private practice called language and literacy solutions in 2015. And she spent the last five years assisting students with language and literacy disorders and successfully applying structured word inquiry to language and literacy intervention. So thank you, uh, Shauna, for being here on our Chivization show. This is such an honor and such a pleasure. Thank you and welcome. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. So structured word inquiry is not well known or a very familiar topic right? Uh, whether in the United States or even in India. So tell us what it is and why does it work for all students and how does that work? Sure. Well, structured word inquiry is a way to teach English spelling. It is based in orthographic linguistics, which is the science of written language. And we follow the steps of the scientific method to analyze words and to think our way through spellings. So uh, for many dyslexic students, um, finding patterns and looking at structures is a strength for them. So uh, we can teach to their strength rather than targeting their biggest deficit area, which is trying to memorize spellings and words by sound. Um, it works for so many different types of learners, I think, uh, too, because the process is, is dynamic. We can meet students where they are, and uh, most of our uh, sessions are student-led. So we go where their questions take us and where their interests lie or what they're studying in the classroom. Um, a word might come up from a book they're reading, and we begin there. I think uh, kids really enjoy uh, beginning with a word that they're interested in. I've, I've started with words like unicorn or dragon or um, animal names. Animals are a popular topic among many of my students. And um, they do better when there's more to unpack in a word. I think the little, the little words are sometimes the most difficult for dyslexic students. And how does that really differ from other literacy interventions? Well, one way that structured word inquiry is different is that it's a descriptive process rather than a prescriptive process. So we take a look at what's there and we analyze it. Um, we often don't know all of the places we're going to go in a session until they happen. We don't come into a session with uh, an understanding of everything we're going to cover that day. Sometimes we're quite surprised by where we end up. And so, you know, the students remain engaged the whole time. And, um, and they, they it, we don't focus on um, tasks that require a lot of drill. Hmm. Um, let's see, sorry about that. Um, oh, there we go. I made, made a few notes for myself because there's so much to talk about with structured word inquiry. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, we, uh, we teach all words meaningfully. Um, we don't have any words to memorize. Um, so there's no sight words or anything like that. Um, we have a way of looking at words and noticing the patterns, even among those lists of words that students uh, 
typically are asked to learn uh, via flashcards. So most of the words in English that um, are difficult for people to teach and for students to learn come from Old English. But believe it or not, there are patterns in those words that can be taught as well. All spellings can be taught meaningfully. And you know, sometimes when I start with a student, they haven't had any success with learning the writing system. And they've come to believe that they are stupid, sad to say. I, I don't even like that word. I don't even like to say that word stupid, but that's how they feel. And so uh, sometimes when we first get started, it's really important for them to have a sense of, of success. And as they gain confidence and they start to realize, aha, I can make sense of the English writing system, then they become more willing to explore and, and, and ask questions. Uh, one of the first things I tell students is that don't worry, I will not ask you to sound the word out. And you can almost see the, the sense of relief that, that comes over their face. And they smile and they're like, they look at me like I'm a little crazy, like, what? Are you sure? <laughs> like, <laughs> but after a while, you know, they trust, they trust me and they trust the process and, and, you know, things move along beautifully. Awesome. Yeah. So how does it work for people who are slightly, uh, you know, advanced than uh, the beginner stage? Does it work? Can you, can you pick off from anywhere? Yeah, we really can. I um, I had the opportunity to work with some students in a homeschool co-op who were gifted learners. They didn't really have any different learning needs. Um, and they soared with it. They took me to places I didn't even know I could go uh, with word study. And we had the best time. You know, we, we discussed and laughed and, and learned with ease. Um, it was a true sense of scholarship. Um, I remember one lesson that we did, we studied a group of words that we called them words that meant better than good. <laughs> so they were words like fantastic and fabulous and um, uh, awesome and wonderful. And what we, what we discovered uh, was that those words had very different meanings when they were first used. I think it was this piece that, that the gifted learners enjoyed the most, the etymology of words, the history and their origin and how they've traveled through time. So for example, with the word fabulous, it doesn't mean some, it just means something that's really great. It means of a fable. Originally, it meant something that wasn't true. And if something was fantastic, it was like a fantasy. So those, those uh, etymology pieces were very revealing for them and they enjoyed them very much. I myself think I would have done amazingly on my standardized testing that I had to take in high school and in higher education. I would have whizzed through those verbal sections on the GRE, you know? I, I remember, a I have a funny story. I remember I was teaching uh, my undergraduate students and they were all very stressed out about passing the GRE. And I wanted to know what they were experiencing. So one night my husband and I looked up a practice GRE section of the, of the verbal section. Um, and uh, my husband and son and I took this little section together. And between the three of us, we only got 80%. <laughs> <laughs> this was before I started studying. <clears throat> and I remember one word in particular we had no idea what it meant. It was avuncular. And we all guessed wrong. There was like five choices and we all picked a wrong answer. You know, we didn't know to look for the base and to peel the prefixes and suffixes off to try to find the sense of meaning of the word. We had no idea to do that as, as adults, as a speech language pathologist. It kind of blows my mind when I think back about it. But you know, it turns out that it was actually a kind of a funny word. Avuncular is a word that you use to describe a man as he ages and begins to look like your uncle. So we had a good laugh in the kitchen that night <laughs> about that. And now when I look back at it, like, ah, I see it's right there in front of me, an AB prefix, uncle is the base. And there's, you know, this AR suffix at the end. <laughs> If only I would have known, right? The places I could have gone. <laughs> yes. 
And uh, how do you measure your progress with this, uh, with the structured word inquiry? Well, uh, measuring, you know, that's a question that comes up a lot because we're all over the place and we don't, we don't do drill, you know, but just because we, it's a dynamic process that's discussion based and, and student led doesn't mean that we can't probe, you know, and, and obtain accuracies. We definitely can. I've written goals and used them for the past six years. So we can um, go in and check to see what digraphs and trigraphs a student has learned and understands. Um, we can go in and we can see if they can find the English base and tell the difference between a found base and a free base. Um, sometimes I use a rubric or a rating scale, um, but we can also gain, you know, we can go in and probe it and get uh, percentage, percentages as well. Mm -hmm. And how do you do that? I didn't get that part. How, how... Oh, well, so um, I create all of my own materials in my lessons. So if I want to go in and I want to see what digraphs a student is understanding, you know, once a week or once every two weeks or even once a month, I might have them spell words that contain digraphs that we've targeted over a period of time, like a little spelling test, if you will, or I'll give them something to read that has you know, a concept or a structure that we've been working on and I'll see how well they do with it. You know, and I can make my little tick marks as I go and, and come up with a percentage that way. Okay, Great. awesome. So that's, that is a lot of work, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it is, it is. It seems like a lot. Um, but the beautiful thing about structured word inquiry is that, you know, you begin learning right from the start. And as soon as you learn one little piece, you can apply it with your students. When you first start practicing with structured word inquiry, you're learning along with your students. And that can be an uncomfortable feeling for some people, you know, like, I don't have all the answers and I'm going to go in and I'm going to, you know, teach. I remember feeling very uncomfortable in the beginning. I got very hot, <laughs> you know, like, what am, you know, oh, you know, what if I don't know an answer? But um, the longer you practice with it, the more comfortable you get with not having all the answers right away. And you yourself become better at learning through discovery. Um, and learning with ease and just enjoying the process. Right. And how would somebody who wants to learn how to teach, can, mm -hmm. can you train someone in this methodology? Absolutely. Yeah. It, um, if, you know, you have a interest in words or a strong desire or motivation to learn how the English writing system works, anybody can begin and dive in and do it. You know, I'm working with True Literacy to put together some videos to bring some lessons uh, that uh, teachers and parents can use in their classroom and in their home. So they can see structured word inquiry in action. It's not just learning it in theory, but you know, learn by seeing it in practice. Mm -hmm. There are classes, of course, that I took. I have three different mentors um, that I uh, that I that I learned from to learn structured word inquiry. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, uh, would you please pass on the links to your modules that? I can pass over to other educators who might be interested in learning and then also parents and teachers who want to, uh, you know, help kids as well as adults, because I know uh, definitely a lot of people want to, uh, you know, decode, de deconstruct the whole methodology of uh, reading, you know, so. Yes, 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 I absolutely can do that. I also had another question of hmm. how do you work with gifted students? Have you worked with them? Does it shape up differently? Well, you know, the, the look, the looks on their faces of surprise and discovery was probably the most enjoyable part. Like what, how did I not know this? Right. Because they're used to like pretty much everything coming to them easily. And they're, they're quite shocked that I'm bringing something new. <laughs> the group that I worked with, like, how did you, how do you know all this? This is amazing. I never saw that there before. But uh, once you see it, you can't unsee it. And then, and then they would bring stories to me, like, 
oh, I saw this bird and I was wondering about it. And then I discovered, you know, they would share their discoveries with me or they'd have a question like, I can't figure this one out. And that's not acceptable. We have to, <laughs> we have, please to drop everything now and teach this word to me. <laughs> so right. it was great fun going over there. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, this was such a knowledgeable session and very enlightening. So thank you, Shona. Thank you for this wonderful trailer to Structured Word Inquiry. I know there's so much more to it. Uh, to, uh, you know, the viewers and listeners, I will uh, lead uh, you on to other modules that Shona talked about on uh, the Structured Word Inquiry program that she's uh, developing right now with True Literacy. Uh, and uh, just even otherwise, just feel free to check back with us on any questions you might have, and we will get back to you with, uh, you know, a response after we coordinate with the experts. So thank you very much, Shona, for your time. And uh, thank you for everyone who's been watching. And please do not miss our Chivization episodes. Every Saturday, we bring you one lovely person to talk who brings specialized knowledge on something that will actually never go out of fashion so stay tuned thank you very much and have a great week